My name is Mike Africa Jr. I'm a member of the MOVE organization. And as a result of us protesting and fighting against this system, we've been targeted. Many, many, many times our family members have been, have been, have been beat by police, shot by police, jailed by police, put in prison for a year, decades. Um, our family was so heavily targeted by the government. At one point, the, system, the, the Philadelphia police flew a helicopter over our house and dropped a bomb on our house and killed 11 of our family members. People that were trying to escape the house, the police shot them back into the house. People that, the, the, the house was on fire and burned at over 2,000 degrees. And when the people tried to escape the house, the police shot them back into the house. Some of the people that did escape the house were shot and thrown back into the fire. To the fire. We have uh, suffered many losses for our, for our fight for protecting life, people, animals, and the environment. My parents spent 40 years in prison because of their stance against the system. 2018, for the first time in my life, my parents came home because of the fight and the unity that people have in them fighting for them to come home. The MOVE organization was founded in the early 70s uh, by John Africa. The mission of the organization is to protect life and to encourage other people to protect life too. And when we say life, we're talking about people, animals, and the environment. As a result of having this belief and encouraging other people to protect life, uh, we were targeted by the system and their officials, the police, because when you are protecting life, what you're doing is you're extracting yourself out of the system and, and, and supporting it. At the time in Philadelphia, there was a, a, a very, very um, controversial mayor by the name of Frank Rizzo. He was known for his racism and his brutality against African Americans. And his, his police were used and militarized to attack move people, and they did. And they attacked people, and they, would, they beat people, and the, the beatings escalated, and they would come to our house, and, and at one point they beat uh, one of the pregnant women. And they beat her to the point where she suffered a miscarriage. And uh, on other occasions, when move people would get arrested, move people would, other move people would protest to get them out of prison. And we protested. We want justice. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't break any laws. It's, they're maybe 12 or 13 years old. You locked them up for nothing. We want our people home. And that led up to other things. And we couldn't get justice. It became very frustrating. So um, on May 20th, 1977, MOVE took a defensive stand. We said, we ain't, we ain't going through this with you no more. If the police come at us, we're letting the people know we're going to defend ourselves. We got the right to self-defense. We got the right to freedom of speech. We ain't breaking no laws. And we're not, we're not accepting this. You're beating and killing our people. So um, that standoff is what led up to August 8th because the police found a way to say that we broke a law by saying that our house had housing code violations. And when they, they said we had to leave the house. Now we responded by saying, you haven't been in this house to say that it has housing code violations. We even let them inspect the house to prove that it didn't have housing code violations. But they said it did anyway, and their response and how they dealt with the housing code violations was to send 600 cops to the house and send bullets raining down on the people in the house, to send fire, water, uh, water from firemen's water cannons at the people in the house. That led to a police officer being shot because they, when they were shooting, a police officer was shot. And of course, they blamed it on move. So because of that, the people in the house went to prison. And, and many people believe that, that that fatal shot could well have been uh, from law enforcement itself. Actually, I was reading that, uh, or I've heard, maybe you could verify that uh, the, the judge basically said, we don't know uh, where the shot came from, but since an officer died, there, there has to be consequences. Without knowing 
anything more than that, um, sentenced everyone to prison. Is that All nine. Correct? All nine. So that's the move nine. Mm -hmm. And I do believe two of those individuals died in prison? That's right. Okay. And uh, both your father and mother were, were sentenced. And there's still two, uh, right. is it two women? Uh, two men. Two men. Uh, two women recently released? Two women just recently released this past May. Okay. So um, Chuck was 18. Okay. Never spotted with a weapon, never seen to have a weapon. His 18. hands was checked yeah. and he did not have a weapon. My, mom, my dad was 22, my mom was 21. Uh, Janine was 21. Janet, I believe, was around 27. Merle was around 30-ish. There's a story that you were born in prison, is that true? That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember. <laughs> but as the story goes, you were born in prison right. and your mother uh, actually kept you concealed for several days or something yeah, like that? that's what I hear. Right. So, your, both your mother and your father are now uh, out of uh, prison, correct? That's right. Uh, when did that happen? So, the release of them came under a lot of pressure from the people and different officials. Okay. And um, that just happened just last year. Wow. 40 years, they, served, they both served 40 years. And did you, you picked up your father from prison? Both of them, I picked up my mom and my dad. Why are you at the uh, forest and climate resurgence convergence? I'm here because I was invited and anytime I'm invited to do something that supports the environment or people's knowledge about the environment, I take the, if, I, if I have the opportunity, I use that opportunity to do that. Okay. The environment is, what are you gonna do without it, right? I mean, like, I don't care how sharp your speech is about revolutionary action against mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. I don't care how bad you can talk about the importance of freeing the animals from cages. I don't care how sharp and wise you are about human trafficking. Whatever kind of revolutionary position you take, you are not taking without the environment. You need the air. And I don't care who you are or where you're from, how much money you got or how little, what color you are or what creed, if you don't have the air, you don't live. And that applies to everyone. People that are practicing environmental or, or even like community, community sharing so that you don't have to get resources from some other place. You share the resources with each other, with your community. That's the biggest threat to the system. It's a big system, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, and it can crush people. Yeah. Is there any hope? Is the system bigger than the planet? Is the system bigger than the amount of people that exist on the planet? Is the mentality of the system stronger than the need for the people's air? The system is not powerful. What it is is, it's like a um, parasite that depends on people to carry it around and be the host hmm. for it. But it is not powerful. What can, it's, what can the system do without people supporting and endorsing it? Think about the military. The military is a, is a construct set up by the government to uh, protect the country. But when you find out that the military, the branches of the military are actually invading other countries and this, that, and the other, right? Well, the military is big and it's powerful. And there's a lot of people, a lot of weapons and all of that. You've got boats, the ships, ships that are sailed in the Navy. You've got men on the ground fighting in the Army. You've got the Air Force. Well, how many of those airplanes can fly without people flying them? 
How many of them ships can sail without people sailing them? How many men makes an army if there's no men hmm. for the army? And it's the same thing with the system itself. People support the system, and that's why the system exists. How do you stop the system? Stop it. Stop supporting it. Stop using it and encourage other people to do the same thing. What's your take on Black Lives Matter, Ferguson, uh, I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, thoughts. I think that police should stop killing people. And being that they can't stop killing people, they shouldn't carry guns. And if they can't control themselves, they shouldn't be on the police department. The police are supposed to serve and protect the people, not the other way around. Every, every movement is built, every movement that exists and has ever, that has ever existed and is built and assembled because they're in opposition to some injustice. And the government is at the forefront of, of providing those injustices to people. And when Mike Brown was shot, that was bad enough. But when Darren Wilson was, was freed, that just made it worse. Mike Brown had bullet holes in the top of his head. If Mike Brown had been the killer of Darren Wilson, would Mike Brown have gone home? I say, I say there's unity, that the example of unity is present in the fact that my parents came home. The example of unity is present in the people that are here today. The example of unity is in the people that fight to support Standing Rock. The example of unity is important to understand when you're dealing with these politicians. If you expect hope from politicians, I will not tell you to not look at politicians <laughs> for hope, but what I will say is look at the pattern. If things have gotten better, go with it. If they have not, there's your answer. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. And uh, <laughs>